Greatness is defined based on where you have become great. Greatness has boundaries until you expand those boundaries. Writing, write down, called to greatness. Luke chapter 14 verse 7, And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, I want you to, to understand that verse. He says he put forth a parable. He put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden to any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee, and, and him come and, and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin to shame to take the lowest room. Verse 10. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down into the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. Hallelujah. Verse 11. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. When you look at what Jesus is sharing here, he's talking about a mindset that must be in a man who is called to be great. The reason why Jesus was not fighting for the better cities was because he was already great. He was great. He knew what he was. I'll give you an example. You can go in a place. You can be invited in a place. And in that place, you are not great in the sight of those who are there. But you are great in your own right. Am I communicating? For example, in this country, you might be big. You might be something in this country. But when you come to church, you are not big in the church. Am I communicating? There are pastors who lead that church, and in that church, they become greater than you according to the principles of church. Am I communicating? So that's why you will find an MP will enter church and sit at the back and not necessarily invited to the front. Why? Because church has its own rules that govern it. So one who's great in the world may not necessarily translate to a great one in ministry. When you read from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, it talks about how that each one of our works will be tested with fire. It says, but on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has built or has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. Do you see that? He says it's that fire that will show if any man's work has any value. Verse 14. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work does not survive, that builder will be cast away. Am I communicating? So look at the concept of works. Now, when we come to works, there is something we need to understand here concerning the works of greatness. In the works of greatness, God does not permit us to talk our works. In fact, that's how we know great men. A great man does not talk his works. If you really have the works of greatness, you can never speak for them. That's what the scripture says. It says that on the judgment day, our works will be tested by fire, meaning there is a wisdom that tests every man's work. So we are dealing with the second part, scales, understanding scales, how to deal with scales. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. He says, we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves have become unwise or are not wise. So he speaks about comparison. Where does comparison come? It's coming from a person who's already trusting his works. Because when you look at your works, you start to feel like you're some sort of big thing. Now, because you're some sort of big thing, you start to weigh yourself against others. But you see, the moment when you start to trust your works, you start to compare yourself with other people. And the Bible says you don't become wise. It's not wisdom to compare yourself with another person. Paul dismissed any mindset that would bring him to be compared to another person. Because, you see, when they compare you or when you compare yourself with another person, 
in your eyes or in the eyes of those who are doing so they were doing so based on the works jesus asked his disciples what do people say that i am they said some say you are elias some say you are among the prophets now look at israel and its confusion and you'll understand my point here about skills everyone who came that was big israel said that's elijah i think they were expecting elijah to come that everyone who came that was good they said that's elijah that's the prophet that's Elijah. That's Elijah. When, when John the Baptist came, they said, he's Elijah. They even walked to him. The Pharisees, they said, who are you? Are you Elijah or you are one of the prophets? He said, I am none of that. I'm simply a voice that is calling out from the wilderness. Same thing Jesus asked. Who do people say that I am? They went the same line they just said about John the Baptist. They said, you are Elijah the prophet. Until one man excluded himself from the limitations of human flesh and heard from God and said thou art Christ the son of the living God and Jesus said Peter he mentioned his name he said upon you I will build my church because what he had just said was not in the realm of understanding and limitation am I communicating so Jesus said flesh and blood has not revealed that why flesh and blood because flesh and blood dwells in the realm of comparison so the only thing they knew was the prophets and Elias. But Peter was able to go to leave that level and see the Son of God. Because that prophecy was also there, that the Son of God would come. But nobody could imagine that the man they were looking at was Christ, the Son of the living God. Turn with me to Proverbs 11, verse 1. Proverbs 11, verse 1. The Bible says, God hates unjust scales. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but just weight is his delight. Meaning, a person must weigh himself according to his true weight. Let's deal with building from within. Building a life from within. There are people in life who don't know how to live life from within. They don't know how to go and get results that are legit. They don't know how to go out and receive, uh, and receive results that are pure. This is why they find themselves demoted. Because they don't know how to receive from God the right way. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? If you ever have need to chip your way into something, you don't have that level yet. While we look not at the things which are seen. That's the spirit of those who have faith, have true faith in God. True faith in God. That you come to a place where the things which you are doing are not dependent on what you can see. Yes, external might be telling you you are broke. But if inwardly you are a great man, it's a matter of time and money will find your address.